Hi. Welcome to our video, where you will learn how to define load groups and load cases, and how to generate load combinations in Consteel. So let's begin. Let's open the simple haunched frame structure we have created in the basic modeling tutorial. So we have created our structure and now we need to define loads. In Consteel, the load tab contains all functionalities associated with load creation, including load cases, load groups, and combinations. A load case represents a group of loads inseparable in both time and space. A load group is a group of load cases, wherein the loads may be mutually exclusive within load combinations. In the present model, we shall define permanent, snow, and wind load groups for this structure. So, select the load cases and load groups function under the load tab, initiating a panel for defining load groups and load cases. Upon creating a new model, the default structure on the left side of the dialog box includes one load group with one load case. Start by selecting the appropriate load group or load case name on the left, then rename it on the right to a name that suits your needs. For example, change the initial name of the load case to dead load. You can confirm your actions with the apply button. Introduce a new load group by selecting the new load group button at the top of the dialog. But first, select the appropriate category in the window next to it. In this case, the new load group contains snow, so select the snow option. The wind load group and case are defined similarly. As a final step, assign the automatically generated structural self weight to a selected load case. To do this, open the drop down list load case including self weight at the bottom of the table and select the appropriate load case, in this case, the load dead load. The next step is to create load combinations. Opt for the load combinations button beneath the loads tab, revealing the load combinations table. Select the option automatic generation of load combinations, which will display symbolic formulas for load combination types under various design situations. For our scenario, select persistent and transient design situations with ULS limit states, alongside characteristic combinations for G plus Q irreversible serviceability limit states. Now we start to add actual loads to the load cases recorded in the load model structure. Click on the drop-down menu under the load tab and select the load case to which we will assign specific load components. The loads added next are added to this load case until the selection above is modified. In the case of frames, loads are typically transmitted through purlins and wall beams at certain points, however, if they are placed relatively close to each other the loads can be accurately approximated by distributed line loads. Concerning dead load, which is characterized by a gravitational nature, it is appropriate to consider it in the global system. Choose the line load function under the loads tab. Then enter the start and end values for the distributed load intensity. Currently, set the values to minus 8. After that, click on the structural elements to be loaded, and the load symbol will appear on the model. For the snow load cases, transition to the global projection system mode, adjusting values to minus 6, and allocate loads onto the roof structure. Duplicate these actions for other snow load cases, introducing asymmetrical values like minus 6 and minus 3. Regarding wind loads, revert to the global system and place loads with asymmetrical values 5 and 3 in the x direction to the columns. Given that wind load is considered to act perpendicularly to surfaces in nature, it is convenient to place it within the local coordinate system of the structural element. Switch to the local coordinate system, where the x-axis aligns with the structural element's longitudinal axis, and the y and z-axis correspond to the cross-section's two principal directions. Configure values to minus 6, and refine snapping points equal distribution to 1250 mm for precise object placement. Select the draw icon to place the wind load onto the initial segment on the left. Now change the value to minus 2 and place the loads onto the remaining roof structure on the left. 
For the other half, set the value to 1 and allocate the loads accordingly. With these steps, our task is complete. So that was our guide for defining loads in Consteel. Thanks for watching. Click the like button if you would like to watch more similar videos, and don't forget to subscribe.